singing that hymn. Um, we're going to be talking about some aspects of that hymn today. But before we do, let's uh, begin with, with prayer. Father, we want to thank thee uh, that thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, and in him is no darkness. We ask that thou would give us a good understanding of this chapter today, uh, so your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so it's uh, nice to see everybody here today. And if anyone has any questions or comments, please send those questions or comments to questions at bftbc.org. That's questions at bftbc.org. Uh, or if you want to send a uh, text message or a telephone call, please phone us at 856-816-7839. That's 856-816-7839. We're in John chapter 9 today. Uh, so this is, we'll, just, we'll just read one verse. Each of us can read one verse. Uh, then we'll talk about those verses, and then, then each of us will read another verse, and so we get through the chapter. Mrs. Grummer, uh, go ahead and begin. And Mrs. Grummer, and Jacob, and then Kathy. Uh, you go first, Mrs. Grummer, and then Kathy, you go after Jacob, okay? Okay. All right, Jacob, go ahead. Number three. Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What do you uh, thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? So this is uh, the beginning of this account here in John chapter 9. is about a man that's been born blind from birth. Uh, I've spoken with, I spoke with somebody uh, recently, not too long ago, uh, sometime within the last 12 months, who uh, he wasn't born blind, uh, but... Um, pardon me, wrong, 
wrong, wrong sense. It, it was the ability of this hearing. But the same principle is concerned. Some people lose their sight after they've been born. This man I was talking to, he lost his hearing uh, when he was about six or so, or five or six. When he was five or six, he had a temperature that rose to like 107, 106 degrees. And before they understood what was happening with the fever, fever, and fever, he had lost his, his hearing. Um, and so, but this man, he, that man wasn't born blind. This man I spoke with in the phone in the last 12 months, he wasn't born deaf. When we all, we, we've all read accounts and biographies of people that have been born with sight, but yet something happens to them and they lose their sight. Um, go ahead. Fanny Crosby was not born blind, but she became blind because she had some kind of uh, something, I forget what it was, on her eyes. Mm -hmm. Pultasis, yeah, that's it right. It was a long time ago. And I think Paul, you know, that comes to our church, I may have this wrong. If he's listening, he could call up on the telephone and tell us. I think he was not born blind, but I think he was premature and too much oxygen or something. I forget how that goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he is blind, the same as being born blind, I guess. But I, I, do, I do remember the uh, something about him, about him talking about oxygen a few years ago in the incubator so, and so forth in the hospitals. And so we have a man here being born blind. And we don't, since we have sight and vision, I mean, it may not be the best vision, it may not be the best hearing or the best smelling or the best uh, sensation when we touch. Um, but yet, he, had, he doesn't have that never. He never was able to see. And it, the, the, the account here in chapter 9, I think, picks up following the accounts of chapter 8, when when Jesus passed through the midst of them. They were picked up stones to stone him, um, and passed through the midst of them, and passing by, and passed by. And then you notice in verse, verse 1 of chapter 9, it's possible that this event happened right after that previous event. Not definite, but it's possible. And then it, it says here in verse 1, and as Jesus passed by. Notice how verse 8, chapter 8, the last verse of chapter 8 ends with pass by. That's interesting. And the first, in first verse of chapter 1, first verse of chapter 9, 1 begins with pass by. So it's possible that the event of chapter 8 and this event of chapter 9 have, have, have followed each other directly. Not necessarily, but it's very possible. And he passed by. And he saw this man who was blind from birth. Now, no one had to tell the Lord Jesus Christ that this man was, was blind from birth. He knew it. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is omniscient. He knows everything. Past, present, future, the actual, the potential. He knows all things. He knows all things. And so we have a discussion here that the disciples are having amongst themselves. And uh, Mrs. Grummer, what's this uh, this question that the disciples asked of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, they wanted to know who was who was the one that had sinned, who did sin, his mother or himself, I mean his parents or himself. Okay. That's right. They asked the question, you know, who did who sinned, this man or his parents? Now, sometimes. You know, there, there are physical ailments that people have because of the result of sin. But in this particular case, this man was born blind to the Lord Jesus Christ, that God could be glorified. And so there may be things in our life that we don't understand why they're in our life, but it's possible that it's to the Lord Jesus Christ and God can be glorified. There are some things that come into our life that perhaps we bring upon ourselves because of our, of our, of our disobedience and the way we just may have distanced ourselves from, from, from God. At times, but God wants to have this, this fellowship with us. But in this in this particular instance, this man nor his parents sinned. You know, this, the, 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 the God wasn't passing judgment upon uh, parents because of their sin on their son. But the disciples asked the question, a legitimate question that they had. Sometimes their their, their thoughts or questions are kind of peculiar and strange. Well, you know, we'll see that in a couple. You know. Uh, in two weeks, especially with, with Lazarus, we'll see that some of the questions are kind of peculiar and odd. But 
Here they ask this question. They're asking the question, who sinned? And the response, response in verse 3, Jesus gave the answer. Because he knew, the, he knew the answer to the question. Nobody else could answer the question. No other human being can answer the question except the God-man, Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can answer that question, who did sin this man or his parents? Because, he, again, he knows all things. Just like he knew the man was born, born blind from his birth, he knew all these things. In the previous chapter, when we have, in chapter 8, when we had the woman taken in adultery, in the beginning of the chapter there, he knew all things. And so that's why he said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Because he knew that all those men there that were coming to accuse this woman had sin in their life. And so he stooped down on the ground and he began to write. I'm not sure what he wrote, but it says, the scripture says he began to stoop down again a second time to write. And those men in chapter 8, they were convicted of their sin from the oldest to the youngest, and their conscience made them depart. Uh, and so here in, in chapter 9, again, we have the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrating his omniscience. We have those, those, those attributes that are unique only to God. Omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence, immutable, eternal. Those attributes are unique to God and God alone. No other human being has those attributes. Human beings can have other attributes of God, but not to the same extent. I shouldn't say other. Human beings can have those attributes. Holiness, goodness, justice. Mercy, love, and so forth. Those are attributes that both man and God have. But God has them to the fullest extent. Completely merciful, completely loving, completely holy, without any, any, any variableness or any, any, any contradiction amongst those character qualities that he, he possesses. Bill? Uh, this, this man who was blind at that time, uh, Jesus identified him uh, as such. Uh, isn't this because of Adam's original sin, that there is sin in the world? Uh, there's disease, there's illness, there's wars, there's all kinds of evil things that are going on. Yeah, but that's uh, true. It's, punishment. it's the sin of Adam. That's and, right. and some people are born into uh, conditions like that. Uh, not for something that they did themselves or even that their parents had done. So, yeah, but, it, 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 for you said it's indirectly a result of sin. Right. It's, an, it's a fall, result of the fall. Yeah. The reason why we, we have our, our vision fails is a result mm -hmm. of the fall. The reason why our hearing fails is a result of the fall. Right. The reason why we, we get sick is a, as a result of the fall. All these different things, and that's just our, our own existence. How? Because God said, "You shall surely die." It was a spiritual death, and it was a it was a, it was a physical death. And so the Lord Jesus Christ says, "These this that the, the God should be made manifest." That is, of, of to make evident, to make plain. And He says, "I must work the works of Him." This is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. That set me. Well, it is day. Night cometh. And no making work. And uh, and Kathy, yeah. uh, who is the light of the world? In verse five, who is the light of the world? Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. And so, in this dark world that we live in, Christ came to give light. Now, we know what it's like to be in the dark, when either in a room. Or outside when there's not very much, when it's very overcast and very dark outside. But the Lord Jesus Christ, and then see the man, the blind man, he was in physical darkness. And, and frankly, he was in spiritual darkness as well. People today, they are in, as we'll see later on in this chapter, you know, the, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, those men were in spiritual darkness. See, the idea of the Lord Jesus Christ being the light of the world. He came into the dark world to show mankind the way of the, the way of, of salvation, the way of 
salvation. And so, what the Lord Jesus Christ did, he came down again. In chapter, in chapter 8, he stooped down to the ground to write. In chapter 9, in chapter 8, with a woman taken in adultery, or, or accused of being taken in, being caught and taken in adultery, wrote down on the ground. <coughs> in chapter 9, when he encountered a blind man, he again stooped down. It doesn't say stooped down, but he got on the ground and he made clay. Uh, he, he, he made clay, he got some spittle, and then he got the guy worked, worked with the clay, and uh, he, had all, he had, I had, we, we, he would need a, a good amount of spittle, I suppose, to, to make this clay on the, on the ground. And he, he picked it up and he, and he put it on the man's eyes. Now, when God, when he created Adam, the same thing happened. He took the dust to the ground. Now, he wasn't in, in bodily form in Eden. God is a spirit and they, they worship him as worship in spirit and truth. But yet still, he took the dust to the ground and made the entire human being, made the entire body of Adam. And then from that body, later, he took a rib and made Eve. But see, man is created from the dust of the ground. And so, just to, just to fix a, in, in the eye, in the, in, the, in the thinking of God, a fix, fix a simple problem with eyes that don't work. Just a little bit of clay being placed upon the eyes of the blind man. And so, he... Send him. Where did he send him, Bill? After he applied the eyes, where did the, where did the Lord Jesus Christ send the blind man? He told him to go uh, to the pool of Siloam. That's right. And wash his eyes there. Okay, that's right. He told him to go to the pool of Siloam to wash, um, to wash. And Siloam means means sent. I mean, Siloam. Uh, it means sent. Means a sent. And so, you go ahead. Is that the same pool that the? Man who was in front of him and couldn't get into the water. Is that the same pool? I can't remember. I think it's a different pool. That's that's that's, that's the gate is beautiful. Um, the name the name of the gate is beautiful, but the pool, uh, I think it's a different pool. Okay. I believe it's different. I, I can't say for sure, but I believe it's different. I just can't remember. But we'll perhaps find this out uh, as the class goes on. We will. Yeah. And so, and he goes there. He goes, he washes off, and of course, there's people that we recognize in the community. I mean, there's there's um, several, maybe the, I mean, the one one blind fellow that I've seen walking around. I mean, we, we know, of course, Paul, and there's different, different other people that we know who are, who are we blind. Mr. Arson, we know Mr. Arson, that's right. He used to, he used to come to the Bible study on Thursday evenings, um, and others that, that are have these different ailments. There are, there are obvious ailments. They're, they, they're, they're unique to them. So we, we know that that's part of their personality, part of their character, because it's, it's one of their handicaps. And so the, the neighbors of this man saw, noticed the fact that he was returning from the pool of Siloam in a different way than he went to the pool of Siloam, in a way they've ever seen him before. Because they noticed that he wasn't walking and behaving like he had walked before. I'm not sure if he had some type of cane or how he, how he got around previously. I mean, today, you know, we have, there, there are people that are, that are blind, blind, blind men, blind women, who either have, have sighted have dogs that can help them, they have canes that can help them get around, and they can, they can sense where they're going. But the neighbors saw something change in this man. They, by just by observation, they knew that he had received his sight. Let's read verses, uh, oh, Tammy, go ahead. In uh, John chapter 5, I was thinking it was Acts, but it's John. We had studied it just a couple weeks ago. It says, um, in verse 2, now there was a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda. And he five fortunes. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay, pool of Bethesda, I should remember the pool of Bethesda. Thank you for reminding us. In John, so John, John 5, 2, right? In John 5, 2 is the pool of Bethesda. Here in John 9, 9, 7, we have the pool of Siloam. The pool of Siloam. 
So uh, let's, uh, Mrs. Grummer, go ahead and read verses 9. And we'll read each read a verse until we get to the next uh, part here. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. So, getting back to verse uh, 9, verse 89. So, there was, there was a debate among the neighbors, among the people who knew, that thought they knew him, some said, Definitely, this is the man that was born blind. And some of them said, well, no, maybe not. Maybe it's just someone that looks like him. I mean, that, that's, that's you know, perhaps, I sometimes I see people that have a resemblance of other people. I see somebody, so oh, that reminds me of somebody else. Um, there's a resemblance. But here they're trying to say, well, because of the, the reason why they're questioning themselves is because, obviously, the man could see and so they're, 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 they know, in their, at least in their mind, that this man was born blind, and it's, it doesn't make any sense for us to think that it is he. But there were some that were certain that it was the man that was born blind, the one that they knew. It was certain that they knew it was the man that was uh, born blind. And so... And so, who, who did the neighbors, uh, Bill, who did the neighbors bring to the Pharisees, the man's neighbors? Well, in verse, they, in verse they, 9. They brought uh, the blind man. To yeah, they, the they, brought, they brought the blind man to the Pharisees. Or the man who was blind. The man that was blind, that's right. The man that was blind, that's correct. And they brought, they brought that man that was blind, they, 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 they brought him and took him uh, and presented him to the Pharisees. To the Pharisees, because they wanted the Pharisees to confirm... Uh, something they wanted the Pharisees to to understand that miracle was done. Now, if we noticed here, as we read, that this the, the day of the week it was, it was a, it was the, it was the seventh day of the week. The seventh day of the week is the is the Jewish Sabbath day that the Lord Jesus Christ healed, cured the blind man. It wasn't a temporary healing. It was temporary in the sense that it was just until his life ended on this earth. But the point is, it wasn't, it wasn't a temporary fix. Lord Jesus, when the Lord Jesus Christ fixed the blind, blind man's eyes, they were, for the rest of his natural life, he could see. And so we have this, this continual conflict here that the Pharisees are having with Lord Jesus Christ about miracles taking place on the Sabbath day. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who established the law of the Sabbath. You know, and so the idea of, of doing a good work on the Sabbath was not necessarily out of the question. Specifically for the creator of the universe, it was acceptable for him to do this. But the Pharisees and the scribes, the men in the Sanhedrin, they were very troubled at the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ healed on the Sabbath day, and so, uh, Mom, they had, they had two perspectives here. These uh, these, these Pharisees and these the Sanhedrin. What was the two perspectives in verses 16 and 17? 16 and 17. Yeah, what was the two, the two perspectives that they had? Uh, I don't know exactly what your question means, but he keepeth not the Sabbath day. He says not. It can't be of God because he didn't keep the Sabbath. And then it said, how can a sinner do miracles? 
So they were arguing about that. You know, right, right. being happy that the man was not right. breathing anymore. Right, they were discussing those two things, exactly. They were saying, you know, he, 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 the one on the one hand, one group was saying, you know, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't be of God. The other group was saying, you know, well, certainly, how can someone do miracles except he is of God? And so there, were, there was a, 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 a little bit of a conflict, a disagreement uh, amongst uh, themselves. And so what the Jews did, they wanted, they wanted to verify the fact that this wasn't some, some type of scheme or some type of scam. So when we see here the parents of the man being called uh, in front of the, the, the Sanhedrin, in front of the, Sem, in front of the Pharisees. And um, they want to ask, they want to verify with the parents whether or not this is their son who was born blind. Uh, Mrs. Grummer, read verses 19, please. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. Joey Cappy. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. <coughs> I'm sorry, I was, I, was, uh, I was thinking about uh, this verse up here where he said, who did this? And he said, he was a prophet. Did you already say that? My mind wanders. I'm sorry, go ahead. Read verse, verse 23. Okay. Yes. Uh, 23, therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. That again, call, is that it? Just one verse. I'm not paying attention to what That's okay. No problem. Um, then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Right, and I forgot to, uh, I started Mrs. Grummer in the wrong verse. Sorry, verses 17 and 18. Uh, they say unto the blind man, again, what sayest thou? So they're, they're, they're asking him again. They're asking him like several different times. They're asking the same question over and over again. Uh, What's, uh, uh, what sayest thou of him that hath opened the eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Uh, so the blind man understood the fact that the man that opened his eyes, although he wasn't able to see him when he was interacting with him, because he put clay in his eyes and he said, go wash the pool of Siloam. He didn't see him. He said, he's a prophet. A good conclusion that he made. A good conclusion that he made. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. So they were they were questioning the fact whether or not whether or not the man was blind at all. They wanted to confirm that with the parents. Now we have a dynamic here that's happening when the when the parents are coming, when the parents come. They're going to ask them. They're asking the question. They're going to ask the parents, "Is this your?" Obviously, we see the question here. Is this your son uh, that was born blind? And of course, um, we we see here in this in these passages, you know, they, the parents respond is, you know, "He's a, he's of age. Ask him." Well, they've already been asking him. Um, they've been asking him, and of course, the parents know that this is their son because uh, they say that in verse twenty. They say, we know that this is our son, and he was born blind. You see, the, 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 the reason the, the parents responded, ask him, he is of age, is because they, they the, the Pharisees were asking, how then doth he see? I mean, the parents don't know, obviously. Tammy. Well, they weren't there. No, they weren't there. Most likely. I mean, it doesn't record in the scriptures that they were, so it's unlikely that they would have been there. Yes. Yeah, go, go ahead. Well, I've been wondering as you're talking, um, 
the, the, the blind man didn't ask for help, did he? I, I, my mind, it doesn't seem like it. So that's why they said, who is he? He's a prophet. He didn't really know who he was because he was blind and didn't know. And I, 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 Jesus helped him. Well, we had the dialogue with the disciples came and they said, who did sin, this man or his parents? Right. And what was the answer? What was the answer? Neither. Neither. It's but for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. It's for the healing part that you know, he suffered all right. those years. But I just, uh, and I also like the woman at the well. Did she ask for help? I mean, this is just coming to me sitting here. I can't remember. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ came to the woman at the well and, and asked for for I drink. Woman, I mean, this adulterous woman. I get the mix up. Oh, in chapter eight. Okay, yeah. in chapter eight. Well, he's, the Lord Jesus Christ is the woman where they're, they're accused. The woman was brought to the Lord Jesus right. Christ, and they, 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 the situation was told to him. And then, when after he rode on the ground two times, he says, Woman, where they're down accusers. Right. And he says, Go and sin no more. He was interacting with these people. The, 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 this this person this person was brought to him the woman as well right. in, in in the other instance the other account here in, in John nine he was passing by right. and the disciples asked there is this blind man and so just out of this discussion they wanted to have who did sin this man or his parents Tammy it must have already been uh, commonplace for people to say that it was either the sin of the, the child or the parents um, that they have a health, they had any kind of a health issue. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman that was brought before Christ, uh, the people that brought her uh, before him, I get the impression uh, they might have been mocking Jesus by mm -hmm. asking him to judge the woman. Okay. They could have. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it could have been out of mockery and then... Uh, then he eventually said, uh, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Puts them all right in their place. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does. It does. No. Go ahead. So she, she, I'm not trying to fight her anything. It's just new, new ideas to me. For the woman <clears throat> that taken adultery, she was dragged there. Yeah. She was scared. Now, I don't know. And she may have asked for help, but, of course, Jesus helped her. That's like he helps us last the time that we don't ask. And like this one, this person here, he was healed. And I think that's why he didn't know who he was. He said he was right. a prophet. Right. He knows who he, well, he is a prophet. Right. But, you know, he'll know, he'll find out later. Right. And later on, he'll find out, he'll meet him. It's wonderful. Yes, Tammy before and Bill. Before you ask, yes. before you ask, you're healed. You know, before you ask. Correct, Tammy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, the Lord hadn't confronted him with the truth of who he was yet. No. He, he, all he did was heal him. That's right. right. He didn't do anything else mm -hmm. at that point. Right. Bill? It must have been an incredible shock to that blind man to see for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yes. To actually have vision in front of him to see what light is and mm -hmm. what, what things look like. What color is, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, I, I don't know his age. Uh, but he was apparently a man. He yes. was not a kid. No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, so it must have been quite a shock to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Pastor Dan? Yes, yeah, so Jake, go ahead. Later in this chapter, mm -hmm. uh, we've got the formerly blind man. He said that, that, that nobody has ever healed the eyes of somebody who was born blind. Uh, you know, in, in the history of miracles, uh, in, in the Bible and the scriptures, uh, only the Messiah would do this. He knew enough to know about, about the history of Israel that, that this had never happened. Right. Mm -hmm. But he didn't realize that it was the Messiah yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even Benny Hinn can't heal the, someone who's uh, born blind. That's right. <laughs> so, so Tim, what were the parents, what did the parents fear? The blind man's parents, the, the man who was healed from his blindness, what did they fear? They uh, feared being kicked out of the synagogue. Yes, that's right. They feared, they feared about being kicked out of the synagogue. Because they, they, if they, if they would oppose the Pharisees and Sanhedrin, they would put them out of the synagogue, and that was their, their culture. That was putting them out and cutting them off, so to speak, from what they needed, at least what they thought they needed. You know, the time was coming, hastening quickly, that that sacrificial system was no longer needed because of what Christ would accomplish on Calvary's cross. 
kind of veil in the temple would be rent in twain from the, from the, from the top to the bottom. Tim. Not only that, but um, in 70 AD, they wouldn't have been able to right. offer anything anymore. That's right. That's correct. <coughs> and so in, in verse 24, they, they make two statements, uh, the Pharisees. The two statements <coughs> are, uh, they said, uh, give God the glory, or rather give God the praise, uh, and then the other statement they made was, we know that this man is a sinner. And so, yes, their God was to be given the glory, but as far as <coughs> if their antecedent of this man refers to Jesus Christ, they were, they were wrong in their assessment. Uh, as far as this man being a sinner, because the Lord Jesus Christ is not a sinner. I thought it meant the blind man. Okay, it says, look, let's, let's look at verse 24 for a moment. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pack it back to 23 so we get the previous verse to pick up a little bit of context. Therefore said his parents, he is out of age, ask him. Then again call they the man that was blind, that's the Pharisees that are doing this, and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. We're talking to him. Okay, they mean Jesus. They, they, rather than saying they would say you instead of this. And their their assessment of the Lord Jesus Christ is incorrect. They don't know they don't they don't know enough information. And they're rejecting the fact that he's the Messiah and they're calling him a sinner. Just like a human they're they're they're, they're just like many heresies, many false cults today think that Lord Jesus Christ is a sinner, or has the, had the, you have the, you have the two aspects of whether he's peccable or impeccable. And many people thought he was peccable. No, he's impeccable. Not even he's not able to sin. Right. It's interesting. The blind man, when they said who is he, he said he was a prophet, and the and the Pharisees, they said he's a sinner. Right. That's right. That's right. That is that is that is interesting. Even after he. Uh, Healed them and everything. They were just dead set against Jesus. Yes, that's right. Just so, so set in their laws and their own adding to the, the Old Testament. Right. That's correct. And so the response, the response of the man that was formerly blind says, he said in verse 25, whether he be a sinner or no, I know, I, I know not. But one thing I know that whereas I was blind and now I see. That's what the, uh, the blind man knew. He knew, certainly, his life had been changed in this fact that he could see now. He was able to see. Let's uh, read verses 26 and following. Go ahead, Mrs. Grummer. Pick up at 26, please. Then said they to him again, What did he do thee? What did he do thee? How old was he in thine eyes? He answered them, Go ahead, Kathy, 28. Are you still there, Kathy? Go ahead, Bill. Then they, they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' his disciples. Verse 29. I'm just thinking, today in the speech, uh, how was his name? Oh, man. Yeah. He uh, drew our attention to Moses. He did. Years. And did you see? Did you see, did you see the uh, yes. image on the on the wall uh -huh. of the bone? Okay. Yes. There's written on the wall Moses' picture, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the verse 29. Yes, that's right. We know that God spake unto Moses as far as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. They're still talking about Jesus. Yes. They call him this fellow. The man answered and said unto them, Why he, why herein is a marvelous thing that ye have that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. 
since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? And so this man who was formerly blind is becoming wearied of the questions of the Pharisees. They're asking the same question, how do you, how do your eyes get open? How can you see now? What did he do? They're, they're asking the same, the same old thing. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. He's starting to be like a preacher, so he can. Yeah, and he, he said, he said, he, he said in verse uh, 27, I told, I t- already told you, I've told you already. He said, I've told you already. And um, you can see, uh, Tammy, uh, whose disciples did the Pharisees say the blind man was? They were um, the Lord Jesus Christ's disciples. No, you're talking to the blind man. Whose disciples, uh, in verse, uh, verse 28. Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and who they, who's, whose disciples did the, the uh, Pharisees claim to be? The disciples claim to be Moses' disciples. They claim to be uh, the disciples of, of Moses. Of, of Moses. And so, and then they, then they say, we know that God spake through Mo, to Moses. But are they listening? Are they listening to Moses? As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. I mean, I'm not sure if many of the people um, in Israel today are listening to Moses in present day Israel, and I'm not sure how many people in this time period of Israel were listening to Moses. Clearly, the these Pharisees were missing something. They were they were they were missing the the mess Messiah that was right there among them. And they were they were opposed to him. They were opposed to Moses. But they're saying they're 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 claiming to be uh, the the disciples the disciples of, of Moses. And so a blind man said in verse 30, he said unto them why hearing is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he have opened mine eyes. So the idea, his eyes, his eyes had been opened. It, it is, it is a uh, a marvelous thing that it, that had occurred, a uh, very marvelous thing indeed uh, that had occurred. And so this is what the blind man was saying. Now, Anna, uh, I guess the Mrs. Grummer, who does God not hear? Who does God not hear? That's right. And you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, Jacob, you know, nothing like this has happened in verse 32. Nothing like this has happened uh, since the world uh, was established, as far as one. That was born blind, having uh, their eyes open. That had never happened um, before. Or, you know, it's, it's the Lord Jesus Christ worked out this this miracle because He is God. He is the Creator of the universe, the eternal Son of God, and He was able to make the clay, make uh, make make clay from the dust of the ground, mixed with spittle from His mouth. And place it on the on the eyes of the blind man, and we could, I suppose, we can go into the if we had any scientists that were nearby, we could ask them about the oxygen content in spittle. Uh, why is it? Why? Why is well, because it's it's just a, just a side. It's just from the standpoint of of what what when God breathed into Adam, He breathed into in, in the breath of life, breath of life. No, and so I'm, I'm getting to the point of of how we have oxygen in water. Not not that not that we need oxygen, not that God needed oxygen to fix the man's eyes, but if, if we go back to the initial creation, dust and then breath. Here we have dust and spittle. That God, the second person of the Godhead, the Lord Jesus Christ, had placed on the eyes. Of a man, so that he could see, he could see. Uh, Mrs. Grummer, go to read verse 33, please. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins. Dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, it was he himself, Joseph, the Son of God. 
He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye see, rather now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. I don't understand that verse at all. Okay, well, we'll, we'll explain it when we get to it. We'll explain it a little bit when we get to it in verse 41. And so the idea of, you know, the statement was made, if this man were not of God, he can do nothing. In verse, 30, in verse 33. The assessment of the fact that people, this, this specifically this type of miracle, can only be done by somebody who is of God. And in this particular case, by God himself, God the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. He was the one that had performed and had done this specific miracle. Uh, Mrs. Grummer, what did the Pharisees do and say to the man that was born blind? I'm sorry, I asked the question. What did the Pharisees do and say to the man that was born blind in verse 34? Okay. That's right, they cast him out. Now, I'm not sure what if they what they exactly are saying in their theology here. I mean, it's that I was born in sins. They too were born in sins. I mean, if you're if you're talking about if their if their assessment was that the, his blindness was a result of sin, which was that that was that was wrong assessment because the Lord Jesus Christ said no, he wasn't. But that's but that's what they're getting to. That's what they're trying to get to. Bill, uh, we have several verses here. Uh, in the New Testament, where the Pharisees are talking uh, about uh, sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, not really common. A lot of the uh, Jews, they think that as long as they behave well outwardly, mm -hmm. they can think anything they want inside yes. and mm -hmm. still be free of sin because right. it's their own private thoughts. Mm -hmm. But here, they're showing uh, that uh, they think that Jesus was born a sinner. Mm -hmm. Now, if he was born a sinner, then they're also acknowledging that everybody else is born a sinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, would, they, they cast the man out of the synagogue. Yeah. Tammy, go ahead. Or out of the temple. Tammy, go ahead. Well, they were, they were despising the blind man, the former blind man. Yes. They were saying that, you know, he was less lower than them. Yes. And so why do you, you don't have any right to teach us anything because you don't know anything yeah. because you were born in sin. You know, and, and people today do that, and yes. you know, with their eugenics and, and, yes. and good genes, and, and certain people do. um, don't have certain genetic makeup to make them as high. I mean, you know, anything evolutionary, mm -hmm. you know, you've got those that are yes. higher up, and, and this is kind of mm -hmm. what, really what they were thinking. Right, that's right. Uh, Jacob and the mom, Jacob, what would you have to say? Yes, that's right. That's right. And I, well, you mentioned something about that earlier. I, I understand what you meant. Mm -hmm. I didn't yes. Yeah, this is real good. Mm -hmm. Not good. Well, here he was, blind, and probably they had, all these people around probably helped feed him sometimes, and probably gave him money and took care of him sometimes. And here he was blind, and all, and he's seeing, and because they didn't like Jesus. They made fun of him. Instead of rejoicing with him that he could see, they talked about the sin which they thought he committed or his parents committed mm -hmm. or something. They couldn't rejoice over his sight, his physical right. sight. That's the way a lot of people are. They can't rejoice with you when something good happens. They just think of the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, it's uh, right. strange. 
And so, uh, Jesus being omniscient, it says, it says here, uh, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. He, he knew it before he heard it. Jesus heard they had cast him out as that they cast him out of the synagogue. The very thing that his parents feared happened to them happened to this former blind man. And when he found him, he said to him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? This is the Son of God himself asking the blind man this, this specific question. Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He asks this question to the blind man, former blind man. And, um, and Kathy, what did um, the blind man say? What was the response to that question there in verse 35? Yes. The question is in verse 35, how did the, the main, former man born blind respond? The answer is in verse 36 and following, but... The question in verse 35, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ asked this question. At the end of verse 35, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Yes. He said in verse 36, he said, He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And the Lord Jesus Christ's response was, And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. Now that was how the, what the Lord Jesus Christ said. And so, at this point, when the Lord, when the, the former man, the man who was formerly blind, discovered this, who the Son of God was, and understood that this Son of God was the one that healed him, in verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped, and he worshipped him. Right there, the Lord Jesus Christ can accept and is worthy of worship, because he is God, the second person of God, he is worthy of of, of worship. And so Jacob, um, what's the purpose? What's the purpose that the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world? What's that purpose? For judgment, to convict of judgment, sin, and righteousness. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. He says, I am, for, for, Jesus, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see might, might see, not, might see. Those that can't see, might see. And they which see, might be made blind. Those that are resting upon their own righteousness, thinking that this time of spiritual sight may, not, may, may be made blind. And so we have here the response uh, to this. The Pharisee says, ask the, say, say, say amongst themselves, say, ask the question, are we blind also? They're, they're, they're missing the, the spiritual application of this. Yes, they are blind, spiritually. They're not physically blind, but they're spiritually blind. They're missing the whole thing. Here they're looking for the Messiah. They're, they're actually looking for the Messiah, and he is among them. And they can't see him. And they can't see him. And so, Phil, why did the Lord Jesus Christ tell the Pharisees that their sin remained? Uh, it's because they couldn't see their sin. And it was in their hearts. Right. It's because they claimed you know, they, they, they couldn't see their sin. They said they, they could see. But yet they couldn't see. They were completely blind. Um, you know, you had a question earlier on verse 41. Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. It, it deals with this, their spiritual condition and their spiritual state, in the sense that they, they, are, they want to reject what the Messiah has come to do. They don't want to accept it. And so they're going to die in their own sin. The people that put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he, he died for the sins of the world. 
on Calvary's cross. But that it's applied to those people that turn to him, turn to him for salvation. And so that's why he's saying that their sin remaineth, because they wanted to do it themselves. They wanted to have their works save them, not the righteousness of Christ save them. So this is um, what's, what's occurring here in chapter 9. Now next week we'll go through chapter 10, uh, Lord willing, uh, next week at the same time. But any, any more thoughts or observations you have about chapter 9? Mr. Grummer, we'll start with you. What are some of your thoughts, observations from chapter 9? Yes. And they can't see. You know, That's right, they can't. Mm-hmm. How about you, uh, Kathy? Something you uh, noticed from chapter 9? I don't know, but he just uh, picked the blind and uh, one of them example that he did. Maybe the blind person, one of the blind, has more people participate. Yeah, that's true. If, if, uh, I think, think you may have a, uh, under, I understand what you're saying, Kathy. As far as what, what you, Kathy, we saw summarize what you said, Kathy. It was, it was difficult for some of the other people here to hear what you said. She was saying that blindness is a good illustration of the spiritual conditions. And so when we have physical blindness, that's, 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 very, that's a very severe handicap. Yes. Of, of all the handicaps one could have, um, I mean, I suppose people could argue anyway, but but uh, but I, I it is it is one of the you know uh, top. It's very severe to be to be you know, having uh, losing one of your senses, and sight is one of our senses, and so I think um, it's a good illustration. I mean, granted, we have the idea of, of, of death, spiritual deafness too, but but the, the principle of your spiritual blindness. In comparison to physical blindness, we had Christ perform a major miracle. Nothing that had done since the world had began and healed someone who was born blind. And so, again, another major miracle God can do is healing someone that's born spiritually blind, which is all humanity. He's born in spiritual blindness. And Christ came to die for them so they would be able to have their blindness removed and have spiritual sight. Uh, Jacob, some thoughts you have about chapter 9. Yes, sir. It seems like this, this formerly blind man is at least 90% more than these Pharisees that were cross-examining until he got cross. And uh, I kept thinking a couple of times in, in this, I can't point to the exact scripture, but mm-hmm. Verse 34, thou was altogether born in sins. Now that's the Pharisees talking to the former blind man. And Jesus, one time, the Pharisees or someone said, we were not born to fornication. They would blame, uh, they would rub it into Jesus that mm-hmm. Mary had him when she wasn't with him. But there was, there, was, there was an incorrect assessment. They failed to understand who the Lord Jesus Christ was. Right, right. But they, they, were, they were accusing him. They, they, were, they were making an accusation, but there was a right. false accusation. Yeah, well, that's also what's, what they were doing to this man. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of interesting. Mm-hmm. So Jesus knew how, humanly, how this man 
most of that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I was younger, a teenager, we knew a song, and I won't sing it, but I'll say it. This one thing I know, this one thing I know, God in great mercy pardoned me, snapped sin's fetters and set me free. Once I was blind, but now I see this one thing I know. Okay, looks good. From, from this pastor in John 9. Now, Tammy, some thoughts and observations you have. Well, I was talking to Ann about this last night. Mm -hmm. And um, I, um, we were looking at that verse in the previous chapter, um, of John 8, 12, mm -hmm. where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Um, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's the same lesson magnified yes. mm -hmm. to, the, to the Pharisees. This was the lesson he was talking to them about in John 8. Mm -hmm. And he was being very straightforward with them. And then now in chapter 9, he's, he's got this dynamic illustration, you know, of, of, of healing a blind man. And it's like so close to them. They can't, they can't get a clue of what's mm -hmm. happening. And they just, they're completely blinded by the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and one thing about what mom said about that, that verse, mm -hmm. um, um, about uh, verse 25, mm -hmm. um, whether he would, but not, it's a, one thing I know, um, whereas I was blind and now I see, mm -hmm. that's, um, there was a, a, a gal that was saved about the same time as I, and I remember that's what she said. And it was just, no, it's me. Did she say that and not know it was in the Bible? Oh, no, she knew it was in the Bible. <laughs> but she was, she was very young in the Lord. You know? Yeah. Anna, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, very good. Anna, some, some thoughts you have about chapter 9, please. It's interesting. Yes, it is. I'm not sure if I have any specific thoughts. I guess um, I know that the Pharisees were slight, sort of hypocritical, but we all already knew that. Yes, that's right. That's right. They work. They work. All right, so um, we're going to sing this, uh, what's the last stanza three, four of this uh, yes. hymn. Uh, you probably join us here if you want to. The name of it is The Light of the World is Jesus. Uh, so I'm... Oh. Right here. oh, okay. Yeah, I put yeah. mine in uh, my, my bag. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who is our light of the world? We do ask that thou would 
allow us to look to him for every concern and every problem we would have. And I thank you for the account of John chapter 9 that reminds us that he was here on this earth healing and curing people of their physical ailments as well as our spiritual need. In Jesus' name, amen.